stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have a couple of people. I'm just you you folks have a copy of the budget now. Yes. Did you have something in particular that you were here to question about or have any questions about the budget? I guess we can start right there. Do I need to open the meeting? Well, the, yes, yes, and she, yes, sorry. And so we'll do you first, but after she opens the meeting. I just called it. It's okay. I just called it, that's okay. Go ahead, Julie. Oh, you did just call it? I did. Yeah. Oh, okay, then yeah. that's fine. Okay. So um, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to question? trying to shut down the courthouse because it's not ADA compliant or they're, you know, they don't like the lift situation or something. I, I think it might be just a mover, but I wanted to, just to it, make it sure is. that uh, the county is investing in what it needs to to maintain this as a viable courthouse that is used by the local bar. Yes, and could you could you state your name? Yes, yeah, so I'm Paula Kane. I'm an attorney, um, and uh, you know I also am very involved with one of the other buildings on the street, and understand what it takes for upkeep of these old historic buildings. Right. And but if they don't have a purpose, then they're just these you know. Of white elephants that are out there that right. the public has to decide if it's going to maintain as a historic building as opposed to something that is used. And if it's used, that makes a huge difference. So we have we have continuously invested money in the courthouse. And as I explained to you coming up the stairs just now, um, we have a new lift as of last year. Um, the state has actually invested in this building, a new HVAC system, so... I know that it has at various times, you know. Um, has at one what? point I was speaking to one of the previous side judges, uh, Bob Johnson, who, uh, you know, so, but, uh, and he had talked about putting something similar to what the museum has done with, uh, you know, an uh, elevator, and I don't know if you need restrooms here, but an elevator on the back of the building, which is a lot more user friendly than the lift, which is, to me, is kind of an awkward thing. It probably is ADA compliant, but it's. It absolutely is ADA compliant, and that, that is at an absolute certainty. Um, we're always trying to balance costs with necessities. So the, we did look in when, when Bob was here, um, the two of us did sort of investigate the idea of an of a elevator. Um, it was going to be, at that time, we thought too costly and we could, we could make do with what we had. But then last year we decided to invest the money, not anywhere near what it would cost for an elevator, but we decided to invest the money in this new lift because it was constantly breaking down. So we needed to have some way to get folks up here if they needed the assistance. So that's the way we went. Yeah, I understand that, but you still, I think you still need to look into what an elevator would be that would make the... And, and we're always and I, thinking and about I things like that, that too. But it's an investment kind of thing for the future. And, yeah, yes, um, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. But again, it's always, we're always trying to keep the cost down for the taxpayers. So we want to keep the building viable. That's an absolutely important thing. And you're, you're right. There's always discussion about what course of courthouses may be closed down and, and when and you know what we're going to do. We, have, we are not going to, on a, we are trying very hard not to let that happen. I don't foresee that right now. I don't think the state would really invest in an HVAC system the way they did. Doesn't mean they won't in the future. I don't know. They're closing down the Department of Health building in Burlington. I mean, they're just, you know, yeah, I understand. decide what they're going to use or not, and it can be yep. very arbitrary. So yep. I'm hoping that you're in discussions, close discussions with the state we, all we the time. We speak with the state all the time. 
okay. about things of that nature. Yeah, and to my knowledge, there's nothing that we have not heard a thing about proposing to shut this building down. Okay, that was my concern. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your question. And I should, probably should back up and have Judy explain who's here. Oh. Uh, for, for people that, sorry. Okay, no, that's fine. So we have um, Assistant Judge okay. Kelly Goslin. Yes, hello, that's me. Assistant Judge Josh Aldrich. Our County Treasurer, Chris Goulet. And myself, Franklin County Clerk, Judy Schweiner. Thank you, sorry about that. I jumped the gun a little That's bit. okay. Um, is Ms. Harbaugh on the, on Zoom? Ms. Harbaugh? Sorry, I don't know what else to do. I don't either. Okay. So, so um, essentially we have, being that this is a preliminary budget meeting, we have not finalized the county budget, obviously, but we have made some changes. Um, one of the things I'd like to say to the public is that we are going to be needing um, the bell towers of the building painted, and so we've released an RFP, um, Mrs. Schwenier rele uh, released an RFP to the public um, for painting, so that would, uh, if anybody's interested in having that RFP, because we have not made a decision about that, um, they should contact you. Okay, thank you. Uh, what number? At 802-524-3863. So it's, e they can email me also. Okay, and that email is? is County Clerk at F cvtcourt.com. Thank you. And so if anybody's interested out there uh, for a, a summer next season job, summertime, um, please contact um, Judy Schwenier at the courts, at the courthouse. Um, and you could also make an arrangement. We could, you know, show you, I mean, it's clearly visible outside the two bell towers, um, but if you needed um, a site visit, you know, feel free, we could, we could arrange that as well. Um, so we, 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 we're up and running with passports. That's one of the things I wanted to discuss. Okay. So to our, to our um, the folks out there, we, we need to know, we need to let people know that we do passports here, but we do new passports. We just yeah, don't only do, process new passports. Yes. Do you want to speak about that a little bit, Judy? Because you've you've been behind that whole yes. thing. Yes, I'm a passport agent. Um, I'm not the regional office in St. Albans, but I do process passports, but only new passports. Um, renewals, we don't process them here, but if you call, I will happy, be happy to go through it with you. You can even come in, I will help you put it together, but we don't process renewals. You have to send them in yourself. Um, that's pretty much about it. I'm, I, my office hours are, are only Tuesdays and Thursdays right now. It's from eight to one. So it limits people coming in for passports. But I do take walk-ins. You don't have to always make an appointment. I don't mind if you walk in to do it, so. And so thanks be to um, Judy Schwenier, we have been able to add more revenue to our budget based on what we anticipate from more business for passports. So if you need, if you need a new passport, uh, this would be a great place to come to get that. Um, let's see now. We, so this, this past year, or the year before, we did uh, redo our steps outside um, to make it more uh, public, you know, so the public can use the front staircase. We still need to figure out the security issue downstairs in terms of people coming in the front instead of the side. So that may, that may be something that happens in the future. We've uh, taken care of some uh, repointing and replacing of bricks outside. That was a, that was a pretty big job. And the same person um, redid the stairs so there's no trip factor out there. Um, so that's, I don't know if anybody's gone by yet or not, but it looks pretty nice. So we're happy about that. Um, we have, the usual increases, um, approximately 3% for 
for uh, the for salaries. Um, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. We have met with the sheriff, and we have some. Uh, we have had conversations with him. He is doing his due diligence with his bookkeeper. Um, they're making some changes there. I understand. I wish he was here to speak about it, but um, they're making some changes there that will better track uh, costs uh, for the department. Um, we have flatlined some of the budget items and the sheriff's department is in the process of trying to figure out how to be more, um, maybe, I don't want to say responsible, I want to say conservative about their, their costs. Um, so, but we, uh, as a county, decided there's only so many things we're supposed to fund, and, and so we have to be reasonable about that. So they, they have some work to do on their end. But in speaking of that, the support for the, for the Sheriff's Department is guided and controlled by two things. Um, it's uh, the Statute 24 and it's Section 73, but it's also the Stowe v. Lamoille uh, case law. And so we, as a county, are responsible for providing and, and the onus is on us to provide the county with uh, the, excuse me, the sheriff with an adequate bond, uh, suitable office space, office equipment and supplies, adequate telephone telephone services, um, law enforcement equipment, supplies, insurance, and funds for maintaining and operating such equipment as the assistant as we as we deem necessary to ensure that the department operates in a safe, accountable, and professional manner. And the county will also provide reasonable secretary and bookkeeping assistance, uh, funds necessary for department personnel to comply with the basic in and in-service training requirements established by, by the uh, Vermont Criminal Justice Council, uh, funds to provide the matching share for grants from federal, state, or private sources, and funds to pay the liability insurance premium for the sheriff and sheriff's deputies. So that is what the county is responsible for in terms of the sheriff's department. Um, and, and, and again, we, we try very hard to be careful with your money, taxpayer money, um, and really fund those things that we deem to be absolutely necessary in order for the courthouse itself to stay viable and for the sheriff's department to, to be able to operate. Um, having said all that, and uh, Ms. Kane, you already asked your question, so I, did you have another question or? I don't. Okay, does anybody else have anything to add? Did I, did I miss anything? I don't think so. And again, this is the preliminary budget. Our next budget meeting will be when, Judy? That will be the final one. It's um, January. I put it down. January 11th. It's a Thursday. We have to decide if you want it during the day or at night, evening again. And we will uh, we will make that decision, and then we will let folks know to the extent that we can with announcements. Um, if there are any questions about the budget from the people out watching. You can contact, again, that phone number is? 802-524-3863. And um, Judy can either answer those questions or she can send the questions off to myself or Judge Aldridge here. Um, and then we will go to Chris and ask him <laughs> for the answers. <laughs> the answers that we don't have, that is. Um, and with that, is there anything else that we need to um, talk about tonight? I don't think so. I think that's about it. And again, we are still working, building this budget. So we welcome your 
your thoughts, your questions, your opinions, we welcome those. So please be in touch. And that is it. So what time is it? It is 5.53. So this is the close of the preliminary budget meeting. Thank you. Thank you.